<laughs> and uh, nothing like starting off a Tuesday night with your guests laughing at you um, with your lack of professionalism. But welcome everyone to Getting Back to Zero. It is Tuesday night, uh, having a good week so far, but I'm very excited. Uh, uh, two weeks ago, we had um, Erica on on our Thursday night panel discussion. It was the first time I'd ever met her and uh, she stole the show with her enthusiasm and her knowledge. And uh, I got a ton of people saying, you got to bring her onto the show. We got to hear her story. So I am thrilled tonight for um, our Tuesday night chat to bring in Erica from, um, where are you here? I got a, from Northern California. Hold on just a second. I'm trying. No worries. Um, oh no, this is a professional thing. I, I did one thing real quick. So it would, um, I'll just do this. So I'll pin you here, get that on. Yeah. So how you doing? Good to see you. I'm good. Good to see you too, Jeff. Well, um, it's, uh, I'm just getting the details worked out on this stuff, but so good to have you here. Uh, you are where? In your, you're in the greater Sacramento area, correct? No, I'm not actually. I live in Southern California. Oh, um, you're so in LA. LA. I was like, yeah, I'm in the Valley. So when you met me uh, for the panel, I was at a uh, women's conference in Atlanta. So I love travel. <laughs> And that was with Katie, who is, uh, you're her sponsor, I take it, in AA? No, I am not. Katie's actually my sponsor sister. You had um, my Al-Anon sponsor on the other day, which is a Bridget Carmen. Okay, so, gotcha. <laughs> well, anyway, so I'm wrong on everything, but the bottom line is that uh, uh, you're here and that's all that really matters. So cool, maybe, cool, cool. maybe I should do what I do best and just shut up and let you talk. But, uh, <laughs> so real quick, just... Um, I don't know your story. I'm dying to hear it. Um, just start from the beginning. What ended you up on a, a sobriety support group uh, talking on a Tuesday night? How'd you get here? Whew, okay. Um, well, let me just calm my nerves. I always get really, really nervous when I'm going to share um, just because I know like my higher power is getting ready to shine and do what they do best. So I, my name is Erica C. Um, my grace date is October 21st, 2017. And for that, I am ethereally grateful. Um, I am a member of a 12-step program. The reason why I say that personally is because there have been multiple spiritual routes that have grounded me to where I am Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. So I was first introduced to recovery or slammed into recovery in Sacramento, California because of an open uh, CPS case uh, that was open for 26 months and 21 days. Uh, the system was like, oh no, you know, you're not doing what you need to by your son. And, and they stepped in as they needed to. Uh, my community stepped in to protect my son from me at the time. That's the truth of my active addiction. Um, I don't want to bore you with the details of what my active addiction looked like, but what I can tell you is, is I was living at the animalistic degradative level. It make it on right now. So you see this spot right here. I've actually pulled that out uh, with tweezers in my active addiction. Am I not addicted to any drug or, or alcohol? I'm addicted to you and how, and how you make me feel. Um, was that, was that Eric, Erica, was that a, uh, a cutting issue, uh, similar to a cutting issue? You know, that was similar to self-harm. Okay. For me, I call that self-harm. I don't like to define that as cutting because there's multiple forms. Right, of right, I got gotcha. you. You know, I could drink my, I drank myself, I drugged myself, I put your needs before mine, you know, um, and all that I relate to self-harm. The only reason, and I want to hear, I, I don't mean to cut you off so quick, but no um, I was talking to actually to my wife about this tonight and uh, about how she doesn't have a drinking problem and I do. I don't understand how she can have one beer and be content for the night. And yeah. she can't understand why after 28 of them, I want one more. Um, yeah. it's, 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 it's fun to have that dialogue because it's two just worlds that don't understand each other. But yeah, yeah. we she had brought up the point that you know, the, the term uh, coping mechanism. And some people, um, maybe I drank to, and that's not the only reason, I know there's multitudes, but I drank to cope with certain things because I couldn't handle them on my own. And mm -hmm. she brought up with um, the self-harm or uh, shopping or porn addiction, you know, some of those mm -hmm. are things that we do to escape the now, uh, you know, the, I got to get away. I just, I want to get out of my, the, you know, I want to get away from it all. We'll get away from life for a little bit. And maybe yeah. those are, so, so that's why I was, I was asking about that. Yeah, yeah, no, you're perfectly fine to ask that. For me, what I can tell you is like, I'm physically, mentally, and spiritually unfit if I'm not working um, 
my spiritual program of action. For me personally, what it is I feel, and this is just me, this is what led me to recovery. It's not only with self-harm an issue for me, um, I'm, I have a very addictive personality. And so, you know, it was the alcohol, it was the drugs, it was the him, it was the her, it was your needs before mine. It was, I didn't, I didn't have the grace of growing up in a family that taught me how to deal with life. Uh, because as you say in the channel, you know, life is lifey. I say, and I don't want to cuss, but you know, life shows up regardless of what you're trying to do. Yeah, and I yeah. didn't grow up with those coping skills of knowing how to do that. That's just not my truth. And I'm not going to say it for what it isn't. I'm going to say it for what it was. Um, you know, and so the courts, they stepped in and they were like, you know, I was, I got it, had an open CPS case for 26 months, 21 days. My son was placed with CPS the day after his third birthday. So it's a date that I can't forget. When I can tell you during that time frame, I had a case plan and they introduced me to the rooms of recovery. Um, sometimes it was through AA, sometimes it was through NA, sometimes it was through CODA. I was exposed to all forms. And for me personally, and um, this may be controversial, but it's my truth and it's my truth and it's my story. Um, I thought to myself, wow, no one looks like me. I am African-American and Nigerian and everyone was white in the rooms and nobody looked like me. And everyone was talking about things that I'd never heard about um, out loud come out of people's mouths before. I got sober in the rooms of recovery, not online which I think is really powerful. People are being sober online, but that's not the truth of how I began the recovery. You know, so, you know, it's, mm -hmm. Go ahead. it's interesting because the, um, you know, the, the being, uh, you know, in a room with white people, I didn't feel like I fit in, like I looked like, and I was in a room with a bunch of white people as a white man, but I still felt like I looked like a drunk and these people look normal. Yeah. And I didn't feel so, it, you know, it wasn't a color thing. It was just in my eyes, I was this stumbling idiot, you know, that was yeah. uh, uh, making a fool of his life. And these people just were these, you know, looking good, had it together, but had a slight drinking problem. And I was, right. you know, I, I came into the wrong room because I was looking for the real drunks, not the, the people that, you know, had a second glass of uh, Chablis this weekend and <laughs> need to cut back. I was yeah. looking for the room of the uh, the guys that, you know, people that were on the park bench. Yeah. You know, for me personally, and this is just my truth, I've always had a strong need to identify. I really focused on identifying with the physicalities. So if you were a reflection of my reflection, you looked like me and you were doing well or you weren't doing well, it made sense to me. I didn't know at the time because I didn't have the tools to close my eyes, to listen to hear a message so that I could later see a message and you can teach me how to live in this life on life's terms because I'm uncomfortable in my own skin. Right. That was my truth at the time. You know, I love these online meetings because you don't have to be on the camera. I, I shared a meeting one time where I, I accidentally or purposefully, I think it was a grace gift from my higher power. I couldn't uh, sign in. They couldn't see me. So I called them on the phone and I shared my message. And then right as I end, then you're able to see me. And that taught me such a lesson because I can be a really, really arrogant and recovering individual. Be it I can be an arrogant alcoholic, I can be an arrogant addict, I can be an arrogant Al-Anon, I can be an arrogant ACA. -er. Those are just the different spiritual programs that I've tapped into that have helped me to identify grace. And I think that if you don't look like me, you can't possibly know how to save me. Yeah. You know, that's just my truth. And I've had to work past that. I really, really have. And what happened to me is at the end of my case, I did what I knew how to do. When my case closed after 26 months and 21 days, because don't you know, I need to celebrate me. I don't know about you, but I never went to a baby shower sober. Yeah, I didn't know yeah. you could attend those sober. So I celebrated me and I started out with six bottles of wine. And then I found myself in the shed doing what I knew how to do. That was a long time. I needed to celebrate me, don't you know? You know how painful that is? 26 months and 21 days. And I was, was my son left at three and came back home at five and a half. I don't know how to do this. I don't know what to do. And um, what I can tell you is I was in the shed and uh, the lighter wouldn't light. And the alcohol stopped working. But what happened is because I was forced to go into the rooms of recovery to get this like sign off by the courts, I went to this 11 step meditation meeting at group one in Sacramento. 11 step says, may I seek our conscious through God, through prayer and meditations. And when you go into the rooms of recovery, no matter where the rooms, they open up in prayer. And I believe that that be the prayer that called me back into the rooms of recovery. 
It gave me the ability to have the breakthrough that I have now. And I got up and I showered and I, and I, and I, uh, because I don't always shower when I'm in my addiction. I live at the degradative level. And I went there and I was in the rooms and I had a hoodie on and this old timer, that's what we call them in the rooms. Those who have more grace hours than I do. We only have 24 hours in a day. And he looked at me waiting for me to share. And I remember crying out and said I was hours off of my recent relapse. By the way, I didn't know what relapse was. I didn't have that vocabulary until I was introduced to some form of recovery. So that's just my truth. He looked at me and he said, Erica, you can come back here. Because I took off running out the rooms. And, you know, in, in, in one of my programs of recovery, we say, you know, when anyone anywhere reaches out for help, I want the hand of a recovery person to be there. And for that, I'm eternally grateful that person was there. And that was my grace date, October 21st, 2017. I'd love to tell you that that's when the insanity of me stopped. That's not when it stopped. And I called upon my sponsor that I have now. I have a male sponsor. And for me, it has nothing to do with the fact that he was male. It has to do with the fact that my higher power heard the God in him and I wanted what he had. And I remember he met me where I was at. I think that's really important. However you choose to sponsor someone or not sponsor someone, you got to meet someone where they're at, not where, I, not where I want you to be at. He met me in Sacramento at the light rail and I'm vomiting. This is what I've been doing and oh, all this stuff is going on and telling all these things. He said, he said, do you have a problem having a female sponsee? He said, I'm going to tell you what uh, David A. told him, my old grand sponsor who passed away. He said, if I'm more concerned with both of us getting to tomorrow sober than fucking you, we might be able to stay alive. <laughs> and I respected him for that. Yeah. And by the way, that was Kevin W. I respected him for that because it was the first time I heard truth. Like, can you just see me as me? Not as Erica. Not as a mom, not as a black woman, not as struggling in recovery. Can you just see me as human? Can you help me? Because I'm dying. I'm not okay. I am dying. I don't know how to do this life. And we would go, it made recovery fun for me. And I didn't come back into the rooms at first. I started with um, speaker CDs. He said, what's that got to do with work on the 12 steps? That's got nothing. You don't got to go into the rooms to work on the 12 steps. And I started. And I remember getting on my knees and asking God to please help me write my truth on the paper because I'd be terrified when I would see it. And my first year of recovery was an extremely selfish year. And I'm so grateful for those who invested in me. What that means for me is, is I was living with my godmother at the time and um, she would come home from work and she'd be like, here's the keys to the car. And, and uh, I would go to meetings and she would take care of my son and I would go to my home group and I would go, um, I don't know what I'm doing. And I would be in that room and I would cry and they would, they would, they would congratulate me because I kept showing up. And for me, I had to do the next indicated step and I kept showing up. And then what happened for me when I first had a glimpse of some spirituality, I had about seven months sober and I went to this women's retreat, even though I have a male sponsor because he said, keep seeking, keep growing, go. I went to retreats, can you go? He would make it challenging for me, make it fun for me. Well, maybe I can. And I went to this women's retreat, it was $150, I'll never forget. And I was terrified because I didn't have all the money at once. And I went to the to the, the chair of that retreat and I made payments to her. And she let me ride in her car because I didn't have a vehicle at the time. And that meant someone valued me and was willing to invest in me. And I went on this weekend. It was the first time that I remember as a little girl I had some type of conception of God or higher power. And maybe there was something after greater than me that just maybe at seven months sober, this might work for me. I don't know, but I'm kind of starting to like the sound of my son's voice again. I'm kind of starting to remember to feed him on time again. And then I had eight months sober and I had a uh, major surgery. I had a hysterectomy with a bilateral cystectomy. And I remember the old timers in the room. By the way, if someone has more 24 hours than you and you hear the God in them, listen to you. Listen to them when they give you this really simple advice. You're going to follow these very simple instructions. You're going to be honest. You're going to be open and you're going to be willing. And some programs you call that are how. And this is how you're going to do this. You're going to go to that doctor. And you're going to tell him you're act you, at one point in time, you're active in your addiction and you have seven months uh, clean or sober, whatever you want to identify that as. And I did. And I, and I, and I told the doctor and I said, listen, I'm a little terrified because if you activate my taste buds, okay, because I have a, I have a, a threefold disease. I'm physically, mentally, and spiritually unfit. 
I, I, have, I have an allergic reaction to any type of substance in my body. I ripped my face apart. I have rubbed it raw. I have drank to the point of insanity. I have used past the point I should not have used. That's what I do to me. I break out in handcuffs. I've been in jail in several different states. Don't let the makeup and the nice candor fool you. That's just my grace gift that I've been given afterwards. So at eight months sober, on the day at eight months, I had surgery. When I left that hospital, I left that hospital clean. And um, I remember laying in bed and I did what the old timers told me to. Listen, the speaker CD is nonstop. And I started my steps over and I began to have a spiritual experience because I began to listen. And I began to hear a bit of a message. And he told me if I keep coming back and I keep trying. And then I hit a year. And in my program, we talk about making a living amends. And after a year, I was done with my selfish year. And after that, they said, okay, it's time for you to give back. In my program, we talk about having um, living spiritual principles in all of our affairs. That means I don't get to be here with you in this online Zoom sharing my spiritual experience and then, and then log out. I don't get to go be an asshole to my family. That's not an option if I wanna remain spiritually fit. It's not okay. I don't get to harm people accidentally or on purpose anymore. I don't get to do that. And so I had this living amends to this tiny human my son, and um, at a year sober, we decided to, uh, about a year and a half, we have 18 months sober, sobriety, I moved out here to Southern California, it's LA, um, because I had some blood family that found me, and I wanted to give my son what I had never been able to give him, and at the time, it was a phenomenal investment, and what it taught me was moving away from the area that I was graced with sobriety, it forced me to be higher power reliant. And so here's the thing. I don't care if you have a God. I don't care if you have a higher power. I want you to know it's not a requirement for you to believe. I don't need you to believe because I believe. Because in that first year of my sobriety, where it was selfish, my own evidence began to prove that without a doubt, there might possibly be a power greater than itself and it wasn't me because I began to brush my teeth on time I began to actually go to bed on time and instead of walking back and forth in the hallway wanting to cuss out my godmother for god knows what reason I actually didn't and I moved here to southern California and uh, began that living amends with my son and um what I can tell you is the hardest thing in life is to be able to show up on purpose and not by accident. And uh, I moved out to this area and before moving, I'd gotten myself a spiritual advisor, a female spiritual advisor, and let me explain why. Some of us have been through some things in our past and my truth is um, I have a lot of trauma in my background, but that's not the reason why I'm in recovery. That's just not my truth. But the thing is, I'm a mother of a nine-year-old but I don't know how to be a mom. I don't know how to be a mom on purpose. I don't know how to be a parent on purpose. And so my sponsor, Kevin, told me what he always tells me. Well, you have to go do what you've never done. And I've taken you as far as I can. I didn't raise any of my kids. I'm an excellent grandfather, but I was a terrible father. And so I reached out to my spiritual advisor, Stacy G. And we did the steps over again. By the way, I love a sex inventory. It's on page 69 of the big book. You know, if that's the book you want to look into. And it sounds funny when I say that, but I'm telling you something, we all have sex problems, all of us. And that was the most identifiable for me. Um, that's where I learned, oh, okay, wait a minute. Let me take a look at this. Okay, maybe, maybe I do set myself up in the position to fail on purpose. And um, she was like, you're going to go. And you're going to set your alarm and this, these are the times you're going to feed Elijah and you're going to learn how to pay your bills on time and you're going to learn to do this and this is how you're going to do it because I needed to learn how to be a woman of worth outside of the rooms of recovery. And uh, that's what I did. I learned to follow instructions, even though I didn't understand them. I learned to be of service very, very early on and my feet began to be so trained and I began to be really... Uh, higher power reliant, and I would be like, okay, help me set aside everything I think I know about these 24 hours I am, I'm in. I can't stand you, higher power. I don't know what you're doing, but there's this thing that happens. My son smiled at me on purpose today. 
He no longer says to me, have you called your sponsor today? Because that was a defense mechanism we had to give my son. Because I couldn't hear sometimes. I couldn't hear when I was being evil. I couldn't hear when I wasn't being kind. And so I'd follow those directions. And, um, you know, sometimes blood family ends, not, ends up not being my chosen family. Turns out I needed to relinquish control and allow my higher power to do what my higher power does. And uh, one more time, as, as we all have been graced with this large re-reckoning or re-traumatizing, or we're all going this collective trauma, you know, COVID hits. And for me, as I told you earlier, I'm this like arrogant, recovering individual. I go, I'm gonna be good. I've eaten from food banks. I'm gonna ration food. I'm a single mom. I've got this. Like I've, I've been to jail in different states. I'm not gonna run out my toilet paper. Here's a washcloth and a towel. Like, come on now. Coffee filters. Right? Like, come on now. Like, come on. I've gone camping. Like, let's. I was. I was. Wasn't even worried about it. I wasn't even worried about it. I wasn't even worried about it. Nose. I keep saying I wasn't worried about it. I didn't even pray. I didn't even say, please protect my loved ones. Please protect the situation that I don't understand. I didn't even say that. And then my higher power did what they needed to do was teach me the spiritual lesson I needed to be taught. And on April 5th of last year, the second great love of my life next to my son, my Nana, my grandmother died of COVID-19 very early on. And that brought me down to my spiritual knees. I needed to be taught that lesson because don't you know life will show up even for me, even though I'm sponsoring, even though I'm, I'm reading my recovery literature, even though I'm paying my bills on time, even though I'm being kind to my son, even though I've got food on the table on time, even though life will show up for me. regardless. And all I know is do what I was taught to do. I reached out to another recovering person that was my spiritual advisor and I remember wailing in the car. And I was told at the time that I started chairing a lot of meetings, although I don't remember, because I needed to tell them myself. And what happened was for me is what continues to happen is I did the next indicated step. I called another recovering person and I said what I was taught to do. Can you please check on me? Because I'm not okay. I've never grieved the loss of a loved one before. I don't know how to do this sober. I don't know if this is even possible sober. And um, I continued to be of service. And for my home group, I put on a, a workshop for them, uh, not because I wanted to, but because I gave my word. And today my word means something to me when I look in the mirror and lay my head down at night. And I got to stay sober. And I got to stay clean and I got to stay graced. I worked with uh, some individuals in recovery and helped them through their program of recovery. And some of them moved on and some of them stayed. But the point is I got to stay. And I got to offer some healing to my son as well. Recovery has helped me to learn how to hold space for another individual, to hold my son while my son cried and not allow my emotions to take over, just to be present for my child. Just to be present. What I can tell you is, is my Nana was in love with every single member of the 12 step programs. She was in love. She used to answer my phone calls when I was active in my addiction and she said she would be in so much pain because she would stay on her knees, praying to her God that she called God and to her angel warriors, but I would just go to sleep and I would get some kind of help. And maybe that was another grace prayer that keeps me in recovery, I don't know. And uh, a couple months later, I was graced one more time doing the next indicated steps and um, I am married now and my spouse is in recovery and um, that's a whole nother, that's why I've got an Alan on sponsor now. You know, I'm learning how to be, <laughs> I'm learning how to be married. I don't have tools for that, but I know people who do. 
<laughs> you know, and um, that's the long thick of it of how I ended up uh, here on a Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Because where else would I be? If this is where my higher power chooses for me to be, this is where I shall be. Yeah. I only have about um, 947 questions now to ask you after that. Uh, I'm such I, a question asker. I'm excited. But, I, all I can hear right now is as soon as I started talking, my wife right now is upstairs yelling at the computer, Jeff, would you shut up and just let her talk? So um, I, I can already hear that coming through the walls. You know, um, first off, the, the tapes, you mentioned about listening to tapes. And for people that are, um, these, these guys are AA, but it, you know, you hear about the 12 steps, but for someone that puts it in a great, fun, extremely entertaining way, Joe and Charlie, who are a couple of the old timers in AA, I don't know if you've heard of them or not. Uh, um, I have heard of Joe and Charlie. Oh my actually. God, those are, those are um, fun, extremely, they're put into language I can understand, mm -hmm. you know, they, they into real, um, real talk. You know, yeah, versus, that'd be the language big, of the heart. That's right, the language it, of the heart you're hearing. But that is that you can find them on YouTube. You can find them. There's apps, um, but their 12 step analysis or description is real. I, I I wore those out. Um, uh, they actually had a, a a second, not generation, but a a Joe and Charlie two after those guys retired mm -hmm. or passed on. Mm -hmm. That kind of carried on the name and toured. But yeah, the original Joe and Charlie, unbelievable uh, group. Yeah. The um, a comment about, you know, you said I, how I am going to do, how I, and it was all, and and I heard my sponsor, you know, the 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 guy that kind of helped me through a lot of this, was when I was hearing about what I what um I should do, what I needed to do, and I I wanted to pick and choose, and I I still want to do it my way. And his, you know, it was, well, Jeff, how's that been working for you? You know, doing this life, this attempt at sobriety, you know, you're what, 04, 9,473 attempts, did you say, at getting sober? So how's that working for you? And it kind of yeah. um, got me to just shut up and maybe I need to listen to some people that have gotten this. Yeah, um, you know, for me personally, I had this really fun, like, uh, act I have um, my sponsees do with me. And no matter what 12 step program you work, and by the way, there's uh, NA speakers, there's Al Anon speakers, there's ACA speakers, there's all types of speaker CDs out there. And I, no matter what the literature is, you're always going to find the word we. And so I have my sponsees highlight the word we or underline the word we. And they go, okay, they were reading, they go, oh, we. And they, okay, okay, I'm like, we. I always emphasize the we. And they go, why are we emphasizing the we? I'm like, oh, because it's a we program. That was how I learned that there were other people out in the world besides myself. I need actual acts of surrender. I don't see I in any recovery literature. I need actual acts of surrender. I have to physically see it because I'm mentally and spiritually unfit. But if I opened this book and said, we, this is how we have recovered. Oh, okay. From a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. I go back to obviously you can see in the background football was a big part of my life and mm. um, you know even uh, Bo Jackson who was uh, my opinion one of the most gifted natural uh, unbelievable football player slash athletes ever he still walked with 10 other guys onto that field mm. to uh, he couldn't have done it himself and that's why the yeah. weekend um yeah i always say that i'm flanked by a thousand and one angels you know that one is for that one is for the ones that know that don't know that recovery exists in all forms i love to refer to myself as a student of the 12 steps the ones that don't know that recovery has gone online the ones that don't know that recovery exists sitting right next to you it is for that thousand and one that someone is praying for you. And if you don't believe, you don't have to believe. You could be an atheist, you could be agnostically inclined. I don't work those kind of programs. I work a spiritual program of action. And, and that goes back, you know, people, obviously the word God is a, just the, the divisive one. So many, you know, yeah. uh, and I know there's secular um, groups. I, I don't use that as a reason to or not to, but at yeah. the same time, 
it, it, people are, they see that word and come to an abrupt halt. I can't do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And I always get like, there's this pamphlet called The God Word, which I highly suggest. By the way, you don't have to identify with a program in order to read its literature. Put that out there. And I had this, um, there was this awesome uh, individual in recovery uh, who was like, I was like, I just can't get past this like God and God and God and God. And if and, and none of you look like me, because you know, I got identified because I'm that arrogant recovering individual. <laughs> and this individual said to me, just read the God word. And it was this awesome pamphlet of literature. It's called the God word that helped me wrap my mind around, not wrapping my mind around of just seeking to understand than to be understood. It's really cool, actually. I, you know, I tell people, you, you don't have to make the decision right now. Just just keep the door open and just just go and see what happens. You know, my thing is, is um, give yourself the chance to learn and get more educated to make that decision. The thing this is, can... you don't actually have to make the decision ever. <gasps> ever. You never have to make the decision to believe in something greater than yourself. Because if you're like me, I gradually have come to the point where I can admit to you, I have a higher power. Gradually. Only because not your evidence, Jeff. Your evidence will never be enough for me. Not the Joe and Charlie workshops. It's not enough for me. My own profound experience into my life. If you only knew what it was like before I knew 12-step programs existed. If you only knew my life has been restored, restored, not because of me. I did the action steps, but that human being that I owe that living amends to, that beautiful grace gift that I didn't know was a grace gift, smiles and laughs just like a nine-year-old should. And I think a lot of us know what it looks like when you take laughter from a child. But do you know how it feels when you give it back on purpose? That's that thousand and one angel part. That's that one. I don't always believe. I don't have to believe. It's not a requirement for me to believe. I, I have, uh, you know, the, the word higher power of people that struggle with it. And the, the one, um, and again, this is AA, but the step two that admitted that, that there is that a higher power could restore us to sanity. Then it's could. If if I my my philosophy is if I don't believe that something a higher power could fix me, then then all I have to rely on is me. And if I'm relying on me, I might as well cash it in right now because I mm -hmm. I I'm o for, you know I I hope I pray well I pray to God I pray to God that there is a higher power because I don't know what that higher power is. But I don't care if it's you, I don't care what it is, but I pray there's Ooh. anything out there stronger than me that can help me because me alone, I, 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 I it ain't working. Right. Yeah. Don't worry. I, it's not me. I, I am well, not your higher power. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, and, and I, I don't want to get in the personals, but you know, I do believe it. I am a, a God man, but I still, I, I like to think higher powers and, and maybe God yeah. is at the top of the list, but this uh, group that I that we're with talking with you is stronger right now than me alone not doing this. So yeah. this this is a higher power for me. Yeah, and that's so, this that's what I'm saying. It isn't so that yes, cool. like, that's when recovery begins. Yeah, you are a higher power for me because me, I'm simply no, a vessel. Well, me simply and you together vessel. are stronger, and I have a better chance with you than I do with just me. I've tried the just me. And it ain't working. So I got to drop the I and make it make it a we if I have yeah, a chance. Yeah, I'm digging so, this we. And we can agree to disagree. Like, how badass mm -hmm. is that? As I'm not trying to consult your channel, I apologize. Oh, no, no, no. You're you're good. But those are the things that people get caught up on that. And yeah, all I, all, all I know is I can't do this alone. Yeah, yeah, that's, exactly. That's the one like, thing I've proven. You can believe strongly in the way that you believe. And I can believe. And I we can have our own conceptual our, my own concept, my own conceptual concept. And if it changes, great. And if it doesn't, that's okay too. And we can still exist in the same space. Like that is amazing to me. That's cool. You know, um, talking with someone today, um, you know, you were talking about your grace day. And mm -hmm. for me, I always called it my freedom day because uh, it was not just that I got sober that day. I, I, the list, I don't even have enough time tonight to go into all the things I got freedom from 
when I, when I stopped drinking. Uh, and it wasn't just freedom for alcohol. I got mm -hmm. freedom from the list is huge. Um, but this, this person I was talking to had a friend that I think had over 20 years and um, some tragedies in, in this person's life, uh, loss of loved ones, lo you know, certain situations that I, I don't want to say just could happen to any of us. Mm -hmm. It probably will happen to all of us. Mm -hmm. And, um, <clears throat> you know, for me not to drink today, because, you know, that person cut me off or gas was up 50 cents from last week. But you know what? I, the, I overcame it and I didn't drink today. That's pretty lousy compared to someone that lost a loved one today. That is a challenge. You know, right. dealing with yeah. 50 cents a gallon prices going up. That's not, I'm patting myself on the back because I didn't drink over that. So my point is, is that even 20 years of, okay, well, obviously you got this licked, you know, it's, it's done and you can just forget about it because you've beaten it. If you, it's cured and gone, which we know is not the case, but a, a tragedy, um, a loss like this, there's something that, that can make me drink today. And I, I have to be ready because it's not a matter of if it's going to happen, it's, it's when it happens and I better be ready. And it, it, it just shook me to think someone after 20 years, mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't know the reasons. I don't know if what, you know, like, can I, can I, can I invite you into a, a, can I, may I invite you into a share, like a thought of mine? So like, I don't know about you, but like, I'm full of contempt prior to investigation. Like that's what my recovery has taught me. But what I can tell you is um, as they should, someone's experience of, of my experience of my nanny's death is not any worse than your experience of the 50 cents of gas um, being, Higher. Let me tell you why. This is just my truth now. I have not suffered more than you. I've not suffered less than you. You have not suffered more than me. You have not suffered less than me. At the end of the day, we are human beings who happen to work a spiritual program, who are happening on purposely trying the very best that we can if we actively work our program to improve. So if someone with 20 years relapse, you know what I say? They had the same amount of time we had, that I have. You and I have the same amount of time right now, Jeff, we're in these 24 hours. We just have 24 hours. Forget the accumulation of the 24 hours, right? Like, let's keep it real simple. Don't, 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 let's keep it real, real, real simple. In these 24 hours we're in, now we're in different time zones, but let's pretend we're in the same one right now. Um, we have the same amount of time. And what you showed me is that the disease still exists. What you've shown me is you may have stopped working your spiritual program of action. What you've shown me is, oh, that's right. The only mental defense I have against the first drink is a relationship that must come from a power greater than myself. You, you refer to it as God. I hope that's okay that I'm using your reference as God. I refer to mine as higher power that I've named Zion. Design in the eyes of my son, Elijah. It, there is no difference. But I have a responsibility to that individual who went out to continue to grow in my spiritual program of action because that individual failed to grow spiritually. In any program of action that you work, it says we must continue to grow spiritually or we go. We're very thirsty, even in recovery. This is a different type of thirst. That's the truth. My truth, anyways. That's my truth. Another um, question for you. We talked a few weeks ago, and I don't know if this is the case, but you know, like I t like I mentioned, I I'm an AA or, mm -hmm. and um, the meetings. There are times we have meetings that are. Oh God, you know, it's kind of a little bit now. I'm still glad I went. It's it's brushing my teeth in the morning. It's getting off on on a foot. It's getting a routine. It's getting the momentum, the right kind of momentum going. But we talked about uh, a <clears throat> few weeks about the term um, sobriety stagnation. <clears throat> and um, I think the person that brought this up was meetings are getting dull. I'm in a routine. I'm getting bored with it. Mm -hmm. Every day we say the exact same things over, you know, there's a little bit and I understood it. And that scares me because <clears throat> um, 
you know, I, so many people, many um, alcoholics substitute when they quit, you'll, you'll hear people that quit drinking and take up um, uh, exercise uh, 12 hours a day. They take up golf and play 947 holes a day. They, because we are, we're comp we compulsively drank when we take that away, the need for compulsiveness, mm -hmm. whatever reason, translate sometimes some people can shop compulsively some mm -hmm. people can do whatever i worry that i jump in full-heartedly and maybe i'm I, I i'm scared to death of getting bored in recovery and i don't know but in every day that i do this and and you know talking with people like yourself completely recharges me yeah but am i going to run out of ericus am i going to run out of i don't know i and and someday where i go God, I, I'm, I'm in a rut and I'm, but sobriety stagnation scares the heck out of me. So um, first of all, God, I hope you do run out of Erica's because, <laughs> um, you know, I'm human and I'm going to fail you and I'm going to disappoint you. And I'm going to hurt your feelings because my evidence has taught me that I'm going to Well, as long that. as there's another one behind no. you to fill in, that'll work. But. <laughs> God, I hope they don't become your higher power. But what I can tell you is this, for me, um, I don't call that spiritual stagnation. That means it's just time for you to do some more growing. You've got like your nails in. So for me, yes, we have, I am an aa -er. I am also an na -er, which is Narcotics Anonymous. I am also an al honor. I am also um, a aca -er, which is Adult Children, Alcoholics and Dysfunctional Families. And let me tell you why. Because I have gone seeking and searching for different concepts of a power greater than myself because sometimes I hear the language of the heart's been there and if this area is no longer serving me it's because my higher power is forcing me and pulling me to grow elsewhere i'm not still friends with the people i was in my active addiction i have a very small group of individuals who work their oh the way they work their recovery wow they fire me up they keep me accountable. I have not stayed in the same way I was when I first came into the rooms of recovery because I grew. It's okay if a meeting is no longer serving you. That's okay. It's okay if you wanna try out hearing a message from a different area. There's nothing wrong with that. If it's not working in that space and you can feel that, well, let's look at that. I've done a six and seven drop the rock because I, I need to, I need to look at this differently. I've changed. Yeah, you have changed. I'm not who I was at one day, clean, sober, however you want to identify it. I'm not the same person because I've grown. I see things differently. Colors are brighter. I drink water on purpose now. You know? <laughs> so yeah, there's, I have had that same feeling and I didn't know until it was my, my, sponsor Kevin W which is you know it's taboo to, to be sponsored by mail or if it, that's what some people may or may not say I'm gonna tell you this I don't care about any of that I could hear a message I could hear a message I could hear a message that was what my higher power needed me to hear was a message that was simply a vessel who happened to come in a human form of a male whatever we used to go to CA meetings, cocaine anonymous meetings, we would go to AA, we'd go to NA, we'd go to C whatever it was, it didn't matter. What are you doing today? I'm trying to, I'm trying to work my spiritual program of action. Well, how do you do that? I want to hear what you're reading. Let's do this. Let's laugh together. Let's go to Diddy's afterwards. Let's do all these different things. It's okay if something no longer serves you. There's nothing wrong with that. Kevin, Kevin is, uh, I had him on and wow, he's incredible. The, the, he, he was a lot of fun, a lot of fun yeah. to talk to. Um, <laughs> that's, he's going to definitely uh, be back because I only got started with him on some things. Yeah, I um, believe it. <laughs> uh, he was great. So we're going to, I'm going to pin you down right now. And, um, uh, and only if it works out, obviously, but you offered a program called Drop the Rock and uh, that you have, um, I guess, managed, I don't even know what the term is, chaired I, a program. No, I facilitate a, a facilitate, workshop. Yeah, I could, yeah, I could think of the word. A wor six, workshop, six. that was what I was trying to think of. Mm -hmm. So tell me about that. And I, I, you don't have to commit right now, but I would love to see if we could do something through the group 
um, that, you know, if you'd be up for facilitating, but what is, tell, tell us about what is the program Drop the Rock? Or the workshop okay, or whatever. So, um, Drop the Rock is not a program. It just takes a deeper in-depth look at steps six and seven, no matter what spiritual program you work. And um, six and seven is looking at our character defects. You know, I'm maladjusted to life or, or, or um, for me, uh, I don't get hungry. I don't get angry. I don't get tired. But when I get lonely, it just like manifests itself. In, like these crazy ways of like, I get like you and I'm like, this meeting's terrible. This bullshit sucks. And really, what I'm really saying is I was late to the meeting and I should have become, should have come earlier. But what I'm really saying is I really come for the meeting before the meeting and the meeting after the meeting because I like to hang out. I love talking recovery that way. Um, so what six and seven uh, does, originally it was presented you know, by Sandy B. So Sandy Beach, I highly recommend uh, looking up an individual. And no matter which program you work, uh, all the programs have the same steps and, and six and seven is awesome. And it, takes a more in-depth look, especially if you've already been through your steps and you kind of get to really see like how you are manifesting in other areas, like really look at you. Um, I love six and seven. It's, I definitely think they're huge action steps. Uh, I think it really, it really helps, helps you focus on like surrender and what it looks like to surrender, you know, on a daily basis. Um, Is this something also, that it, for people that aren't in a, um, an AA or a 12 step program? Is it something other people can? Oh yeah, for sure. I think so personally. And I think it, it's, um, I think it kind of, the thing is, I think the steps, I think the spirit, because it's a spiritual program, right? And so anyone I think can find some type of spirituality, you know, in them. And I would love to put it on for the group teach you how and then help yourself continue to share the love it's not my workshop it belongs to the god of the 12-step programs understanding um and it's a fun workshop i sent it to you i don't know if you've had a chance to look at it and there's great questions there that we get to ask and we, we read together and we highlight together and we laugh together and we question things and you gain some more clarity and more to be revealed happens and you're like oh that's what that means for me now so yeah you know so um when I first got into, um, and again, with AA, 12 steps, when I got to my 12 step, I graduate, I get my diploma, and I no longer <laughs> have to go to these meetings, and I'm done, yeah. and I never have to uh, worry about drinking ever again. Mm -hmm. uh, I, that, that was my mentality. You know, you're, you're cured, you're fixed, here's your diploma, have a nice day. Uh, but I think so many of the steps in six and seven or four and five, you know, the, the similar it's, it's um, you know, with, with uh, the 12 steps, alcohol is mentioned in one of them, and that's the very first step. The rest are dealing with me. Uh, you know, the alcohol- Wait, Say that was again, Jeff, dealing yeah. with who? Well, dealing with us, uh, but yeah, exactly. It's about, well, it's all about Jeff. So that it's all you about Jeff, then, yeah. You know. But no, it's, it's working on our problems, whatever. And it, there, there's, there are things that apply, they don't have to be, their, their life steps to mm -hmm. be a better people. It's really, I, I almost feel sorry for people that aren't alcoholics because they don't get to get the growth from working a program of recovery that I have. I am such a better person yeah. because mm -hmm. of, of this journey. You know, so I think, you know, I am grateful that I am an alcoholic because I wouldn't be where I am today if, if I hadn't had all that you know it's, yeah, it's crazy yeah. as that sounds sure. but no, it's, it's not it's, crazy at all have you worked with also, traditions yet off, Jeff um you know what we we do a, a course with that but mm -hmm. I have not uh um we kind of rotate with our thing where we go the 12 steps and then we'll go into the traditions yeah. and break those down we spend the, less the time joke, the joke of those of us who got sober or clean in the rooms of recovery the steps are suicidal prevention and the traditions are homicide <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and it, uh, luckily, I mean, my opinion for me, I'm glad we spend more time on the steps than the traditions. Uh, so some oh. of those, but, it, but I, again, we haven't gotten into them too many. So there's it I'm is the learning. consistency of the traditions that if it wasn't for a multiple of them, you wouldn't see minorities in the rooms of recovery. You wouldn't see women in the rooms of recovery. Oh, yeah. Oh, the so book. I ask you to take a, get, a, a gander at those traditions again, because that book of Alcoholics Anonymous would not exist today if it were not for the traditions. The rooms would not be consistent. The autonomy over the groups would not exist without the traditions. Well, it is, in, it is, in all it, of our affairs. 
the the book has so much to offer, but it is definitely written. I mean, it is uh, it is not equal for men and women. I mean, you know, the it's it's the it's all the men are coming home at night to the the wife need. Yeah, it's very. Um, you couldn't get away with a lot of the stuff that's in that book. As far you know, as I don't, today's that's terms. not the bit that I was wanting to focus on. I was wanting to focus on the fact of first of all, I could care about the, the male or the female or how it's written, whichever. I'm just an alcoholic. But I mean, is that the tradition is this what have have nourished that first 164 that give you that excitement that you feel now and that experience that you and I share. And um, if it weren't for the traditions and keeping that consistent, that that message, carrying the message, not the alcoholic, yeah, not the recovering individual, but the message, that message you're hearing that's because of the traditions that existed long before you existed. All right, I'll pay attention more when we go through the tradition stuff. It was kind of, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm here. Uh, I got a lot to learn, so it's that's good. <laughs> Keep um, coming back, more to be revealed, as Kevin would say. Keep coming back. Well, that's the thing, it's, it's that uh, the analogy of the onion, peeling back layers, and that's what I love about recovery is, is every day I read you know, something that I, I might have even read before but, oh, wait a minute. And then yeah. I can kind of, and I, I, I you know, the self-realization, the self-growth, the self-awareness uh, is, it's so much, it, it's it's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, the the passion, the, the what did you say last time we spoke? You were like, you know, not everyone is, you were saying something, but like, not everyone is, has the confidence that you have. And it's not confidence. The reality is I've, I have fallen in love with the recovery program of action that saved my life. How would you speak about the thing that you fell in love with? What would it sound like coming from you? How would you want to share it? You know, they, we were, someone brought up, what are you most grateful for? And the, you hear about gratitude lists and those kind of things. And, you know, that, that list could, again, there's not enough time in the day to go through everything, but I, I've got to say for me, what I got most out of this program, I have learned how to dream again. I had given up on dreaming. Um, I was, I, my, this is so sad. My dream, Erica, mm -hmm. was to get up in the morning, A, have enough money to, to, to get my, my alcohol, um, not get a DUI, not lose my job, um, not get busted by uh, my wife and my kids, if I went to bed at night at the end of the day and laid my head down and didn't, didn't get arrested, didn't lose my job, didn't lose my family, uh, and had enough to drink, didn't get mm -hmm. caught, and, and had um, a plan to get rid of all the empties tomorrow, then it was a successful day. Then mm -hmm. my dream was achieved. My dream was, was reached. And that's pretty sad. You know, I don't think that's sad. You know, before recovery, I didn't even know how to dream. I didn't even know that was a thing. So I get it. I identify with what you just shared. Thank you for doing that. I recently started dreaming. Like, it is so cool. I have recently started dreaming. I tell you this really cool thing that happened to me. Um, so I have this amazing job where I work with parents like me, um, who is at one point in time, I had an open CPS case. And now as part of my living amends, how cool is this? Like my higher power gave me this dream of like helping people because for whatever reason, people hear me when I speak. I used to shrink and be terrified of my own voice. And there are these human beings that get to help purposefully. I dreamed of like, I don't know if this exists out in the world and it does. I was hired in a pandemic when people were losing their jobs. Yeah, like dreaming is really cool. It, it, it's just, it's fun to anticipate the day and not dread the day. Yeah, you know? and, <laughs> and, uh, that part. <laughs> it is, I, 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 I can, I think tomorrow, I look at of what uh, what am I going to accomplish? What am I going to do? What do I um, what do I get to do tomorrow instead of what do I have to do tomorrow? What do I get to do? That's like what, my ass. yeah. What do yeah, what yeah. do I you know do I um, I I have to not be I have to not drink tomorrow. I get to not drink tomorrow. I have to live a sober life tomorrow. I get to live a sober life tomorrow. You know that I don't know when that happened. <laughs> but my, my glass went from half full to, or half empty to half full. Actually, yeah. it went from half empty to overflowing full. Yeah. Because yeah, my, I, yeah. for sure. My joke, Jeff, is I always say, you know, like I'm, I am high maintenance. I know that it takes a lot to maintain me. Trust me, I know. 
Okay, I work the steps in order. <laughs> I work the traditions. I know I am high maintenance. So if I do all those things, then I get to do this cool thing where I get to sit down and talk with Jeff <laughs> and actually hear you when you talk. Oh, it's yeah, exactly that. The, you know, that's one thing I, I also learned in this program to listen mm. um, and actually hear, not just uh, hear the words, hear the message versus just hearing audible sounds, which yeah. I never did. Yeah. Whenever I share in a meeting, Jeff, I always gay. I always, I always say to the to you know the newcomers, welcome home. But I always say, may you continue to hear the message, may you continue to see the message, may you continue to feel the message. That's that language of the heart. The um, I know this is a corny one, but I'm going to ask you going back to when you were uh, knowing that you needed to get well, when you were wanting to get sober but had not become willing to get sober and that's a that's a big one that i hear so many times uh i i i want to quit i want my life back i want to i want to stop drinking or you know what well i i want to be um i want to be able to run a marathon i want to uh, be a scratch golfer i want to uh, be a millionaire well jeff are you willing to do what it takes well no i'm not but i want those things well, yeah. it's not until you're willing to do those things that you have a chance of getting them. And when it's I wanted not, to get sober, nothing happened until I said, you know what? I'm willing to do whatever it takes to get mm -hmm. sober. That's when it you happened. You call it whatever it takes. How I was raised in recovery, willing to go to any lengths. So when I was in, when I first got um, sober, I didn't have a vehicle. And so I would take the bus and light rail and I would not, I would not get a ride home from you because don't you know, I've traveled across country for my addiction. If I can't get there on a bus and light rail, then I'm not going to do it. Um, I can remember I would pack my son up and we would go to the meetings and we would get on the bus and light rail. I was willing to go to any links. I have met sponsees where they are at, not where I wanted to be. I would go to any links for the life I have today. Any links? There, there are um, people that the recovery thing, and, and this is not by choice, but uh, the ads for recovery places on TV, a lot of them look, you know, like the uh, the the Hyatt Regency downtown. You know, mm -hmm. there's uh, when I got into the my recovery uh, a year ago, November, I was waiting for the the hot coals to be placed on my back next to the steam table and my personal yeah. chef. You know, on the commercials on TV. Well, I, I, I think it was for me, it was the um, the Rocky movie when <laughs> the, the Russian Drago is in the, the sophisticated gym with all the technology and Rocky finally goes to the basement. And that's what I needed. It was like, all that stuff isn't going to get you sober, Jeff. I needed to be, I, I, yeah. I didn't need that stuff. I needed to get down to where I, the only thing I had was besides some of the tools and the people was a mirror. Cause I needed to just, yeah. Yeah, I needed to look at myself and I needed to see who I was yeah. and I needed to talk to, I needed to talk to that person. I, that's another thing this, this, this um, recovery has given me. I think when I went by a mirror, I turned sideways. I did not like to look at the person that was in that same mirror. same hello another version of that's like a different version of my self-harm like i did this in the mirror i remember like for the longest time early in recovery i couldn't it was in rehab and i would wear like a full face of makeup and you couldn't see me by the mirror because i was terrified of me it was a different you know there's a similarity there. there's far more similarities and differences i went to a million dollar rehab that was paid for in sacramento and i still relapsed afterwards like i needed to keep it really really simple some of those rehabs that are fancy work for some people. That's great if it's worked for you. It can work for me. That's not my truth. And that's Erica, okay. why did why did you relapse looking back? After going to a rehab, what could you have done? What should you have done? What didn't you do? Um, what was your do you have do you know? Oh yeah, for sure I know. I know exactly what I failed to do, what I could not do. I could not be honest. I failed to be honest because for the life that I was living, the truth of the matter is my CPS case was open for 26 months and 21 days. And during that time, there was no one to come forth and to help me get my son. 
So during that time frame, I relapsed, ripped my face apart, went to the hospital. They put me on um, IVs, cleaned my system out. I was finally able to uh, move back to my ex's mom's house. I ended up going to school to get um, uh, aid, which I was able to pay her off to able to sign paperwork so that my son could get overnight so I could begin the process. See, people don't really want to hear the ugliness of what that really looks like, but you can't do what I had to do the way I had to do it and stay sober. I couldn't have. I couldn't give you the honesty of I'm living in a trap house, but you don't want to hear that. But that was my truth of the way I was living because I had no help. There was no one to ask for help. I had to figure it out. People don't want to hear that. That was why I relapsed. I came back. I didn't come back. Finally, my higher power said, enough. And what happened to me in that house that I was living in, my godmother moved in, who later I didn't know was going to be my godmother. And someone told me, don't cut off another person's blessings. And when she offered me help, I knew I had just this much worth. And I got a little help and I was able to move out of that trap house and I was able to be honest and I was able to say I've relapsed. And she said, I know, I knew. And there was one person I could be honest with. In the big picture, people don't really want to hear the truth of what it looks like to survive in the way that I knew how to survive. But that was my truth. Some of us are graced with different luxuries of honesty and open-mindedness and willingness. But in the life I live today, what I can tell you is my higher power said it's enough. And this is how you're going to do it. And today, the truth is, I am only as honest as I am willing to be. I only become as open as my higher power tells me it's time. It's okay, Erica. This is more to be revealed. You can handle. That's why. It wasn't about the rehab, which was just a clean space and helped fat me up again for my next run. That's my truth. Yeah. The, 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 the honesty thing, it was easy to admit I wasn't being honest with you. Mm -hmm. But when I had to face the guy in the mirror mm -hmm. and actually, actually admit I was lying to him, that was hard. And and to be honest to him, honest with the guy in the mirror, that sucked to be <laughs> that sucked. Yeah. To have to to have to look him in the eyes and face the truth was not fun. I mean, there's the reason why the back of our medallions say, you know, to thy own self be true. Do you know why I say gray state? I say gray state simply because of the fact it's when I was graced. I accidentally was graced back into the rooms. I had no intention of coming back, not a one. I was graced with it. And then over time, the insanity changed up a little bit. And now I have to do more work than most. And sometimes I'm more tired than most, but I'm willing to. And out of my willingness, I could become open. And out of my openness, I become honest. That's my who and that's my how. Erica, thanks so much for being here with us. I um, will be watching this one over and over again with with uh, notes. Um, unbelievable story. I can't thank you enough for sharing um, everything. I, the inspiration, the education, the motivation. I, I unbelievable. You're um, welcome. My higher power was very busy this evening, apparently. Well, it's it's you know, and the thing is, is because of we uh, mm. i'll do I'll, I'll get through this i'll get through tonight because of we yeah um alone i'm in trouble but you know and and that's i tell people there are a lot of hands reached out you know people that have been there that are going through this that understand that get it yes and, oh, can I close out with this real quick, Jeff? Yeah, I think please. this is important. When people say that there's hands that are reached out, let me tell you something. Okay, let me tell you something. 
Some of you have only gotten sober or clean or whatever recovery online. And some of us have only done that in the actual physical rooms of recovery. And some of you may want to seek that out again. Let me tell you a really big secret. The recovery rooms will show you exactly what you want to see. They will give you the gift that you want to get or not get. It is a great example of what life is like. Not everyone's hand is a good hand. Not everyone's hand is unsafe either. Keep that in mind. Don't expect the rooms online to be perfect. Don't expect the rooms when you, if you actually physically go to recovery room to be perfect. It's a perfect example of the world. That's all I wanted to say. But maybe, maybe you might be full of contempt prior to investigation like me. And maybe you might see something and you might hear something and you might feel something that'll keep you coming back because I believe in you, because I believe. Works for me. I like it, Erica. Thanks so much. No problem, Jeff. Have well, a good we're uh, um, stay on here, but we're gonna uh, definitely have you back uh, Thursday night. We have our panel discussion again. Uh, another uh, group of experts, um, <laughs> and uh, people say, I, "I, you know, I, I don't know enough about uh, um, this to be an expert on your show." I said, "If you're in this room, you perfected um, drinking and al you know alcohol abuse or whatever you want to say. You got all the experience we need." because uh, that's what we're here for. So anyways, we're going to do that. Uh, and then um, Saturday, uh, Peggy and Ketsia have another great guest. So we got a lot of things lined up. But Erica, you are a treasure and um, can't thank you enough for being here. No worries. So we, will talk, we will talk to you soon, everyone. And um, uh, we'll post some of the stuff on the Drop the Rock uh, workshop, because I think that'd be a lot of fun as well. So take care, Erica, and uh, keep talking to everyone. Uh, be safe, everyone. See ya.